and welcome to Canon City Comic Club, an episodic examination of the most memorable storylines in comic books. I'm your host, Tristan Cooper. My elf name, personally, is Greasebeard. Andrew Bridgman, your elf name now. Uh, my elf name is, um, d dumb, dumb man. Dumb man, you're a human, wow. Scum of the earth over here. Yeah. Carolyn Page, you thought about this, I know it. What's your elf name? I am Cool Phone. The Just of the woods, <laughs> of the woodland realm. Okay. Are you a wolf rider? Cool phone, the wolf rider. All right. Yes. You got a, you got a phone? Cool phone. Okay. You can just say it over. Okay. I, I guess that makes sense. Enough uh, with these dream berries, guys. No. Yeah. Oh boy. Let's, let's, let's talk about Elf Quest. Yeah. Well, that's what we're here to talk about. Elf Quest, uh, the long running series by uh, Wendy and Richard Peeney. Uh, it is uh, it just ended last year after. 40 years. Wait, Woo! what? Is that true? True. 1978, this came out. Like, this is really wild. Like, before we get into the background, uh, I wanted to talk to Carolyn about this because this was a specific request from Carolyn for mm -hmm. us to read Elfquest. I like always like kind of like known about it, but I like something I never picked up, never even opened. Uh, but I know that you are a huge fan. Uh, what is it? First of all, you're welcome. I mean, it remains to be seen whether I'll thank you or not, but continue. <laughs> Second of all, so this was actually introduced to me as a young kid. Um, a family friend taught, uh, worked with kids who like had trouble engaging with books and like didn't really like to read. And so he would use these comics mm. to like, in for high schoolers specifically, to like entice them into the world of literature. And I mean, they're, it's titillating. It's a titillating <laughs> series. Sure. So it totally worked. And so he gave them to us as a kid, uh, to my brother and I, and we just like loved them and read them. And it was so formative for me. And it feels honestly pretty vulnerable to like be talking about sure. it because I've never, I don't think as an adult, and even as a kid, I was like, other people aren't going to be into this. <laughs> I mean, um, when I first started reading this, I was like, oh, no, I'm going to hate this. And Carolyn's going to be like, I'm going to have to say to Carolyn's face, like, I didn't like your thing. <laughs> and then, don't worry, by the end, I loved it. Yes, I yes, I'm it. so happy to hear that. I want to read so much more Elf. Oh, my God, now. I can give you all my issues. It's also well, I have to all finish free online. the 700 page uh, volume one, and I'm not going to read it in my browser on a computer. Sure. So, it goes uh, quick, though. It's a quick read. That's fine. No. I need to I need to read things uh, on the toilet. That's the only place sure, I can read. Yeah. Sure. The I've got my uh Skywise, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got my Skywise pin. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. Wow. By, uh, it was given to me by a comic shop owner when I was a little kid. I went in and he was like, "No one ever asks for these comics." And he like gave me this pin and it was very special. Oh, wow. he's like a Pokémon gym leader. Like <laughs> yeah. you passed the test, you got the badge. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's nice. This was like the only comic that I had really read until my senior year of high school when mm. um, two friends, shout out to the Broke Markle twins, gave me a bunch of X-Men comics. And so this was kind of the only comic mm -hmm. on my radar. Interesting. Besides like Bloom County, but that doesn't count. Right. <laughs> I mean, look, before I read comics, I read Garfield and Kathy. You know, you were a Kathy kid. I, I, it was all the comics that we had at the local library. I can't and talk I about <laughs> Kathy because I will get furious. Ack. Ack, ack. <laughs> we'll get so <laughs> mad. We can't talk about it. Uh, we won't get into Kathy. We will get into ElfQuest with yeah. some uh, back background information with our continuity catch up. And there's not a lot to talk about here because uh, we are reading. We're starting from the very beginning. Uh, there is uh, not. A, there's no baggage going in, even though there are comics later that sort of uh, kind of <laughs> like prequels. Prequels they take place before, mm -hmm. and there are other editions that sort of like, like are like ordered chronologically. It's like watching episode one of Star Wars before the A New Hope. Yeah, I guess. the correct way of watching Star Wars. Sure. The correct way. Right. Oh boy. Uh, no one's gonna be mad at that. Don't worry. <laughs> but what what struck me was that this uh, comic because when you talked about ElfQuest and you gave me a link to it because you can read a lot of it online mm -hmm. just at ElfQuest.com. And the, that's, it the is color. Website. It is color there, and a lot of the compendiums you'll find are black and white. I think the the art holds up really well in black and white, but the colors are also uh, like pretty decent. Gorgeous uh, there as well, and it's got a, a real like Lisa Frank vibe that I'm very into. Yeah. And uh, 
But, but I thought it was a webcomic from like 10, 15 years ago. That that's what I thought. When you gave me that link, I was like, this is this is right. But the comic started in 1978 mm -hmm. as a comic like uh, it was in uh in a, an issue of Fantasy Quarterly, and then they self published, and then it went to Dark Horse, and went to Marvel, DC, like. It like it went all over the place. And is ElfQuest part of the Marvel universe now? Yes. Can they show up in the MCU? Oh my They're, god! Well, don't tease me. We, something Kevin we were talking Feige. about before the. Sh <laughs> there is an '80s comic of X Men that has Kitty Pride wearing an ElfQuest T-shirt. Yeah, there is. So it's a it's a property inside the Marvel universe. So they also read ElfQuest. Maybe she knows about the historical elves and loves their quest mm -hmm. and got a T-shirt. You know, you get like a T-shirt of like. Uh, Mongo the Mongols, <laughs> you know, like a histor historical group, or like yeah. one of those like maybe. Uh, I'm just trying to keep them in the t universe. T-shirts that says like the Communist Party, and it's got yeah. like Karl Marx with sure. like, a lampshade on sure. his head. Yeah, one of okay. those I historical tees. I can yeah, get that. Like, those are real. That. Those are real things. That yeah. sounds great. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, there's there's not much else to talk about here unless you have any like hot like background info that you've gleaned over the years. About the uh, conception of publication on these stories. Did you read all of it? Did you finish it? I have not read all of the ElfQuest properties. Wow. I've read all of the main quest, but there are, it kind of, the story kind of sprawls and the universe sprawls. And then a lot of the art in later years was not done by the Pennies. Mm -hmm. And it's bad. Rob Leafield took over. Some of the art gets like so shitty. Like uh, the, Third best drawer in your middle school, like not good. I thought the art hold, held up pretty well, but this art is amazing. Like yeah. uh, that—that that is another reason that what I thought it was more a more modern comic. It was like, oh, this seems to like. I, I know that the, we'll get into the character designs themselves and stuff, but it seems uh, 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 cohesive and uh, uh, grounded and. Uh, just this very well and, and uniquely shaped. And mm -hmm. These these faces are very unique, mm -hmm. uh, great expressions, uh, like really nice landscapes and everything. We should get right into the story Let's while we're it. talking about it. The book breakdown, and that it all starts like with this like big prologue where like uh, there's a like a magic castle. Yeah, there's like a magic rainbow castle. Yeah, floats down from the sky and lands on the earth. And the elves are like, hey, we're here. And the humans are like, no, uh, -uh. we're going <laughs> to murder you because we're evil humans. And yeah. they uh, immediately start murdering elves. And this is this is all prologue. This is all the first few pages. Yep. Vi violent murders. It. Do they get into the, the nitty gritty of that they, uh, in previous books? Yeah, they get into why the elves are there. Um, why they got a magic castle? Why the they quotes. got a magic castle. Okay. It all happens, and it <laughs> gets into a little bit of, without giving too much away, Oh, it gets into some like time-space continuum stuff. Wow. Mm. Okay. In a cool way. <laughs> not, a, not a lame way. Not a lame way. Uh, suck it, end game. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> you do not know our audience very well. <laughs> ElfQuest is Elf what's hot. They love ElfQuest. They hate end game. Yeah. And they love watching Star Wars starting with episode one. It's exactly. Yep. It's exactly That's right. That's what we know about nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's fascinating to me. But this does not doesn't seem to be set on Earth. It's like an Earth-like planet. Yeah, this is an Earth-like planet. Uh, it's called the World of Two Moons. That's okay. how the elves refer to it generally. It's got, guess what, two moons. Mm -hmm. And um, so, like physics are a little different than our Earth. Maybe that's why. I think that's that's always how I explain away like magic is like, mm -hmm. oh, the science, like the physics of the planet, mm -hmm. or the universe are it's different. It's also just magic. It's it's fine. There are elves. Yeah, there's elves with and a like magic and a magic giant well, heads. So <laughs> there are elves. Uh huh. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna okay. spoil this. No, no, if no. You, if you don't want a spoiler, just cover your little <laughs> elven ears. It's so ears. funny. Elf there's like all the people like <laughs> elf quest spoilers. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's important to me. Okay, cover your ears now. They're actually aliens. Well, yeah. That's the elves I mean, are actually aliens that I mean, have a different form. And so they came oh. to Earth 
in the future and they saw that humans kind of worshipped these like elf looking deities so they shape shifted to look like elves but then some shit happened and they got <laughs> thrown back through time but they were stuck in the elf forms happens. and so then they crash landed but they were like these aren't our actual forms so but then they kind of like it was a self-fulfilling it's a prophecy. closed loop yeah it's a closed thing. loop okay. <clears throat> time is a flat circle okay uncover your ears now <laughs> spoiler time how is can over. they how can they hear that you that they can they uncover read their my lips Okay. Yeah, they can. Okay. They're watching. Wait, no, because they're reading the subtitles, and they would have heard all the spoilers. Uh huh. They probably they probably closed the video they're by now. Fi- I Close think your it's ears fine. and eyes for the rest of it's the show. Fine. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we flash forward thou- thousands of years, a thousand years. That probably a couple thou. Yeah. Uh, a, a well, couple. honestly, well, I mean, if evolution worked the same way that it does on our planet, it would yeah. probably I would guess it would be about twenty thousand years. Okay. So that's about how long it takes for a phenotypic uh, trait to disseminate throughout a population. Wow. In evo- human evolution. Learning or if you new. give them a moonstone. Evolution. Or joke. if you give them a moonstone. That's a Pokemon yeah. joke yeah. for all you guys yeah. who are still watching. Mm-hmm. A Jokemon, if you will. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We follow a, <laughs> a uh, group of elves known as the Wolf Riders. That's right. Who uh, are, it, the name is very literal, much like a lot of things in this book. Yeah. Like it's just named after what they are. Well, that's what that's like a lot of names in our world. Mm-hmm. New York What's was it? New Amsterdam. Well, I yeah, I mean, I like, that. Let's say you're a, like what's you're your, an old tiny tribe? Colorado. Or, like you're not going to come up with like a Means brand like name red. for your people. Like, oh, we need to brand ourselves. You know, like this is the thing we are. That's what we do. We ride yeah. wolves. Yeah, yeah. we're like the okay. I'd be the cave dwellers or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'd live in a cave. Probably. I guess that's why. I, yeah, that's why I'm Greasebeard. That's why you're Greasebeard. Yeah, like you know, you just call. You don't complicate call, call, things. Call it like it is. Yeah. yeah. They don't have to worry about. They don't got time to come up with fancy names. Yeah, and plus, it's so early in history that none of the names are taken. Yeah, that's true. They get all the Twitter handles they want. Yeah, they all get all get all the website domains and everything like that. We Skywise.com. Shall, we shall call this river, river. Yeah, hell yeah. It's the first one. <laughs> yep, it's the only one. Yeah, as far as they know. Yep. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> things go pretty rotten, like, really quickly yeah. for our our gang. Uh, when they get into some tumbles with the humans, the humans uh, strike back by just burning the whole place down. Very prescient, hot take on climate change. The humans have burnt the forest down because mm-hmm. they're dicks. Mm-hmm. And then the elves must run away. Mm-hmm. The Caves of the Trolls. Yes. You seemed like you had, uh, before we started, you seemed like you had a spicy take on the so trolls. So the, the problem with the trolls and underground characters is that a lot of these characters, uh, fantasy worlds, fantasy uh, uh, races, if you will, sure. are all, uh, a lot of them derive from like Tolkien works and yes. stuff like that. And, and um, the problem is that fantasy races are often like, Almost identified within, and this kind of happens and doesn't happen in Elf Quest, uh, are identified and and associated with uh, human races as the, as they mm-hmm. were, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, uh, over in history, a lot of gnomes, dwarves, uh, goblins, uh, and trolls who live underground have all had sort of uh, these uh, like Jewish stereotyping. Mm-hmm. Like so, like dwarves are like go- gold hoarders, and you know, and uh, they're they're very uh, uh, they they cut themselves off from the world, and like you can see that in a lot of uh, fantasy media. And like when I saw the troll designs for these, like that's what I saw. Uh, and uh, I mean, they it it is it is what it is. It was you know 1978 when this came out, and we don't see the the trolls. For very long, I didn't know about anti-Semitism in the southeast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what could have ever know. happened to bring they didn't know attention yet. to? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're not wrong. Uh, I think, you know, here's the thing I really enjoyed about Elf Quest is that there was no pretense to it. There was no irony. There was no mm-hmm. like attempt to like change the genre or really examine it too much. I think it's just like. People who love fantasy telling their own fantasy story. They're using a lot of the tropes uh, right. from old things. Maybe not 
examining them as closely mm-hmm. as it would have been nice to and like reworking them, mm-hmm. but just telling like a fully sincere story mm-hmm. with no irony or meta textual whatever. You know, like you read a Spider Man thing these days and it's like, boy, I'm glad I don't look like Andrew Garfield. And it's like, eh, hey, wink, blah, 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 I'm clever. Blah, blah, blah. Like Rick and Morty, just they, they want to pull you out. They want to be bathed in irony. Mm-hmm. They want to break the fourth wall. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I just want this. I want Elf Quest. <laughs> I want books that are just like, here's my little fantasy world. I grew up reading Tolkien and all this stuff. And I want to make my own fantasy world. And they do it. And they accidentally <laughs> include a lot of the racist tropes that sure. were built into all the Tolkien stuff or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. And that sucks. But uh, I, I still appreciate it. As yeah. a child, I was unaware of those things. Sure. As a child that grew up in like fairly like sheltered, privileged world. I mean, yeah. Um, thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, but yes, I fully agree with you. And yeah. like a lot of fantasy is super, super problematic. I mean, it's down to it's down to even like just the idea that dark elves are bad and light elves are good. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh my God, absolutely. I have a friend, I have an activist friend uh, visiting me who actually just changed a law in Massachusetts. So if you're getting harassed by a cop, thank Eric Martin that you can take him down now. There Um, there are uh, other examples. The the uh, light elves are actually really kind of messed up in this book though. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, yes. Um, And like within the elves themselves, there's not as, as much of an issue. Because we we'll get to it later. We do meet uh, different elves of color. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess you could say the the sun folk. But EOC. before we get before we get there, uh, <laughs> wish you could have voted for her. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 you, 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 that was like a nice joke sandwich. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, uh, but before that, they, they kind of make a deal with the trolls. Uh, uh, Cutter, the kind of leader that. Is like more or less his star He's of the book. He's good at cutting. The blood of ten cutting. chiefs. He's got the blood, blood of ten, ten, chiefs. ten Tam, chiefs. His well, soul name. Yes. Wow. Don't don't be throwing that around. Wow. Saying that's that soul big. name, throwing it around. Yeah. They talk about it. They talk. They do talk Tam. about it, but you're not supposed to like talk about yeah. it within the tribe okay. unless you're like super besties. Yeah. All right. All right. Like Skywise, his bestie. Mm-hmm. Knows his soul name. Uh, so friends. they are almost. So basically, they get quote unquote help from the trolls who. Tr- who basically tricked them into like shoving them out into the desert to when they were just trying to escape the fire and the trolls don't really like them. Uh, Cutter does like kind of nick a piece of magnet, it looks like, yep. yeah, and and uses it as a necklace. They don't know, but we know it's a magnet. Uh, but they are kind of cast out into the desert and almost like this just felt biblical to me a little bit, totally. Like, yeah. I assume, like, you talked about your uh, mm-hmm. your, your religious upbringing, my Bible roots, your yeah, your Bible roots. Um, was that something that you noticed as a kid? Um, it wasn't just because I thought I, I think a lot of the stories that I'd read were like, now you're in the desert for a while, so I <laughs> thought that was just like, this happens, and if you're on an adventure, like. You're gonna be out in the desert. Mm-hmm. I also grew up like n- in a pretty arid place. Like sure. there was a lot of, uh, and it was in the middle of a big drought. So I was just like, this is this seems normal. Like sure. you better find some water. You're fucked. It reminded mm-hmm. me of a video game. It reminded me of like Zelda. You know, yeah. where like the, oh, yeah, there'll be sure. all forest, and you go through a cave, and you come on the other side. It's just all desert. It's just sure. two completely unrelated like biomes. Biomes <laughs> right next to each uh-huh. other. Well, There's just did. a long line of of. Uh, <laughs> impassable cliffs too. Yeah. It's just a line. It's just a straight line. <laughs> it goes well, on seemingly forever. They didn't they didn't program beyond that that yeah, part. Yeah, so you yeah. can't pass yeah, it. And yeah. And so like it was just like, oh this is like Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's cool. Like also Zelda. elves. Also yeah. Yeah. Oh. He is Legend of Zelda Elf Quest. It kind of is. Yes. Except for uh Link doesn't talk and Cutter won't shut up. Oh, Oh. oh, I'll fuck fight you right now. <laughs> oh. That's good. Uh, so they eventually, they they cross the desert. They leave a couple uh, friends behind. Yes. They leave Red Lance behind and his girlfriend. Right. Red Lance is left behind. He's been gravely injured. How's my hair? Great. It's good. Okay, Looking great. great. Uh, Red Lance. Very Cutter-esque, oh, I'd you. say. Oh, my God, thank you. They, Cutter had good hair. Cutter had great hair. All the elves have pretty good hair. All the elves have great hair. Except Tree Stump. Come on, tree you don't stump. like tree stump? No, the mutton chops? well, tree stump's hair is bad. It's so curly. No, he He's had like, like a he had like the chin like strap Banshee. beard. 
Didn't he have a chin strap beard and like a bowl cut? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Tree whenever, stump. I knew you guys were gonna good. ruin whenever, this for me. Look, Listen, I'm just saying Tree Stump's kind of he's he's a dud. What, tree stump's what, a dud. I think you mean a stud. I, I have to agree kind of with Andrew, but also it kind of like fills me with a little bit of sadness because like whenever I read a comic or whenever I watch a, a show like this, like has like big a uh, lots of characters and like has like a big sweeping story and stuff like who, who who's the person closest to me that I could cosplay? And in Game <laughs> of Thro- no. in Game of Thrones, it's Sam, uh, <laughs> it's it's Sam okay. f- on the Night's Watch, and uh, in Man of the Hands of Fate, it's Torgo, and oh. then <laughs> and then in this book, you're the backstory of that guy, huh? Uh, the legs. We're not getting into the actor who oh, played Torgo in Manos: The Hands of Fate. <laughs> he sacrificed his life to play Torgo. He killed himself. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, <laughs> People need to know. Pe- People don't talk about this anymore. Anyway, I'm tree stump. Don't it's just, silence that's Torgo. That's all I'm getting. Who at. would you be? Me in Game of Thrones or Elf in Quest? Elfquest? In Game of Thrones, also. And I would be. Thrones. I would be the. Uh, Leader of men who's the nude old man with the long beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you know, like the, yeah, kind of yeah. s- the sickly old man. Yeah, perfect. Who burn the, the forest. Who yeah. burns the forest down and has like just like looks terrible. That'd be me. Okay. That checks out. How about you? Um, I think I would be the one of the wolves. Just a wolf, not an oh. elf. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. No, I don't know. I'd want to be all of them. Honestly, I could probably pull off a cutter cosplay with my hair. Yeah, Although I always it. identified as Skywise most because he was sure. kind of a nerd. Sure. He was like, look at the stairs. Mm. Mm. And then in Game of Thrones, I would be Varys. It's uh, mm. partly the stars are how they get to uh, the next the village. Like, Which is almost foreshadowing. Like they, use a, they use a compass, basically. Yeah, yeah, they use the magnet rock that they picked up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they use it to follow one star that stays in the same place. They follow like yeah. the, the their north that? star, the north star, mm-hmm. and they find like this like oasis village of other elves, and they they didn't know that these other elves existed. They seem to be, no. and sa- the same goes for these elves as well, the Sun Folk, who uh, seem to be live in their own society. It's interesting to me that they've all just kind of like after thousands of years, they've all kind of split off into their own societies mm-hmm. and uh, and now they're going to like kind of rejoin. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're seeing. That what's, that's what sparks, that becomes the elf quest, titular elf quest. Okay. Cutter's like, holy shit, there's elves here. There's probably fucking other elves otherwhere. Okay. And they are fucking. Very horny comic. That's. And mm. so then he goes a lot off. A lot of horniness in this comic. And explores and like travels the whole world and it spans thousands of years, this elf quest. And they He's find- thousands of years old? Well, they live for a very long time, but right. the wolf riders are actually, they have blood of the wolf in them, so they're actually the only elves that are mortal. Okay. God, I've never sounded cooler. Why do they have blood of the wolf in them? <laughs> um, because um, their shape-shifting ancestors fucked a wolf. Uh, what is the wolf? Why does it make you immortal? Why does it make you mortal? Immortal. No, the elves no, were immortal. immortal. They were already because immortal. Because they had sex with the wolf. And, and then wolf they fucked a wolf. Immortal. Yeah, exactly. Andrew gets it. Yeah. Keep up, Tristan. Yeah. Okay. Listen. And then, and then. <laughs> Listen. Go get a wolf pregnant, see what happens. Oh. Just, you know, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't do that. I don't know. I don't think a wolf would let you. Listen, if you, yeah. Okay. If you could get a wolf to consent. To that? Oh, I'd be fucking so many animals Go if they could it. consent. Oh we, man, we, what a time! We haven't. I. I hmm? We haven't gotten very far through this story. Hmm? Um, we're doing okay. I, we're, we're, we're doing, doing okay. okay. Um, we're about halfway through our time here, and we are maybe a quarter of the way through the book. You know what else have. I liked about this is <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, you're talking about how horny it was. Yeah, and I really like, appreciated like. The de- you know at first I was kind of weirded out by the designs of the characters okay because it is very weird how they're just filled with abs and mm-hmm. this weird like washboard still abs slender and sleek kind of thing yeah. with mm-hmm. big heads yeah and after a while I was like you know what no they're like the perfect gender fluid uh, yeah. like sexual beings yeah. or totally. like they are this perfect amalgamation of what is traditionally masculine what's traditionally feminine and these are. Uh, perfect weird sexual beings and my brain just wasn't ready for it i just wasn't ready 
to see that kind of perfection. Well, I'm, it seems like your eyes have been opened. My third eye has been opened. And I'm, and so, I can see I'm everything. so happy. You these, can send uh, now. These characters look like hyper-realistic versions of like 16-bit and 30... 16 bit sprites like a Final Fantasy yeah. character yeah. in the overworld yeah. who has like weird proportions and everything, like a yeah. big head and like a weirder body. Yeah. yeah. And um they kind of just like up the resolution a bunch until until they get to Elf Quest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very unsettling. If you're gonna read Elf Quest, don't worry, you'll get used to it. Yeah. Like it's like when they pull you out of the matrix and you're like freaking out for a little while, but then you calm down, you're like, mm -hmm. this is cool. Oh, elves, oh, all right. Elves, all right. Right. Yeah. Yep, and just like th when you wake up from the Matrix, if you read this comic, you'll be covered in goo. Be covered in goo, totally nude, have holes all over your body, and then- uh, You'll have to have worship Keanu Reeves. Origins. Yeah. Yes, also that. So they're in the desert, they so come to Sorrow's End. That's that's what it's called? Sorrow's, Sorrow's End. End. Yeah. Sorrow's End, and uh, they, meet the, they see the sun folk, and they, Basically, An agrarian culture. They they basically rush them. They're like rush them. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're like they're, they're starving. Desperate. Yeah. They're dehydrated. They don't ask for help. They just decide to rush them. I mean, the last time they asked for help, they got betrayed. Okay. And That's they're like, true. we can't risk that. We'll all okay. die if we get betrayed again. That's a good so point. we just got to go for it. So they they went for it. Uh, Cutter sees <laughs> a uh, an elf named Lida. Yes. Yeah. And she, he's like, I gotta have it. Okay. I got to kidnap her. No, okay. No, no. That's exactly Here's what, happens. what happens. He kidnaps her. That does happen. Okay. Yes, that does okay. happen. Okay. Breaking is this, Dawn, part two. Is this a, a, a particularly woke tale? No. no. Is it as bad as some of the comics that we have read on this show? We got anti Semitism. Also, no. We have is it much, women. still much better than Teen Titans? Yes. <laughs> so, well, that's the bar we're going for? <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> so Cutter uh -huh. kidnaps Lita because elves have this thing. Um, they're, it's like a mating ritual. It's like pheromones times a million. And it's called recognition. And so if you believe in the concept of a soul, like which these elves do have souls, that is a given. I personally am not one to believe in souls here on our world, but we're not talking about our world. So they have souls. Well, you're not going to be recognitioning it, people, then, I guess. <laughs> That's uh, something I'll talk about with my therapist. All right. So these elves, when they see each other, sometimes when you see your soulmate, whenever you see your soulmate, you're, you're instantly... It's on. Mm -hmm. It's like Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2 when Jacob falls in love with that baby. Exactly. It's fine. Sometimes you have to fuck a baby. You have to. You know what I mean, Tristan? He's a wolf, so okay. it all fits. This no. is a good point. <laughs> no, yeah, that makes I sense. I think it's just like an old fantasy trope, right? Yeah, it you is. Know? It's like uh, the concept of one true love is well, that, one like of the oldest so and most destructive it, fantasy tropes there, that there is. There's a difference. Absolutely. You, you, it's not like, like, oh, I love you. It's like, oh, no, I, I, this intense, like, takes over your body. Right, right. Gotta I have, have to kidnap you. Right. Want it, gotta have it. Right. Uh, there's a difference between having that moment staring at each other, like Romeo and Juliet staring at each other through an aquarium in 1996's Romeo totally. plus Juliet. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, yes. I might need 1996. Anyway, but like there's Michael a from between, Lost between that connection and then like, I'm gonna steal you as a human. Yeah. Uh, yes. I'm just, or an elf, and I'm just gonna take you away. And then that's resolved like relatively quickly. But she feels it too. She feels it too, but she's also like, uh, Fuck you. So they don't this. in the the sun folk don't really they have lost touch with recognition, which you find out later right. on in the comics, that they don't really do that anymore because they've but they've stopped uh procreating because there's been no like danger in mm -hmm. their lives sure. at all. And the wolf riders come in and fucking danger town. Woo. It's, da danger it's danger to have sex. It's danger town. Hey man, that's USA. an elf thing. Right. That's right. their kink. I'm not here to kink shame. Uh that's so cool. It's not too long before uh, they kind of like hash it out. They kind of like. Oh, I mean, uh, they, they, someone doesn't hash it out entirely, and that's Alita's current boyfriend. Yeah. Rayek. Rayek is not into this. No, he's, he's not into not. his girlfriend being kidnapped. Uh, Whatever. Prude. Yeah. He's <laughs> kind of a drip. You yeah. Know? He's, a, he's a real ding dong. He loves something, let it go. Yeah. Let it get kidnapped. <laughs> let yeah. It, let Liam it get kidnapped. Liam Neeson. <laughs> Uh, they they <laughs> sorry yeah. This, this book moves very fast. Yes, like there's always something new happening. We read about 130 pages or so, which is the first yeah. four chapters mm -hmm. of this massive volume, and like there was like always something happening. There's mm -hmm. always something something new going on. It was like paced very well, mm -hmm. and it, 
like that's another reason I thought it was a webcomic because I was like, oh, obviously these stories are happening. They're just like a little episodic, out. Kinda, yeah. So it is, it is very episodic, but I think that plays to its strengths. Because mm-hmm. um, I always wanted to find out like more about this world. At the end of the book, I was like, well, what's gonna, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Because yeah. at first I was like, yeah. oh, thank yeah. God, I'm. I'm only, it's only 130 pages. I'll be fine. And then at the end, I was like. Well, maybe I got some time. <laughs> See, like it draws you in. Yeah. Like at first, it's like, oh, what, what is this fantasy world? And then at the end, it's like, I really appreciate. Like, hey, this is a world that's totally committed to itself. Awesome, and that's great. Like, I don't see that anymore. Everything I read is just bathed in irony. And it can't take itself seriously. Mm. It won't let you get immersed. Mm-hmm. Elf Quest will immerse you. Yes, it will free you from irony. Yes. So, uh, basically, Lita basically agrees to help uh, Cutter uh, and their friends that they left behind mm-hmm. earlier that were severely injured. She has healing powers. Yes. So she does like a big like splash page oh, of they healing. They all got kind of powers. You know, yeah. Rhea can freeze people with his eyes. Yes. yes. He has very and like old, levitate things. Good powers, mm-hmm. yeah. He's a strong one. So uh, after all this happens, uh, you know, the whole crew comes back to meet like the leader of the Sun Folk, mm-hmm. and it is like this, like almost like human looking, like because they're all like as we talked about, like weirdly proportioned. And maybe mm-hmm. you can explain this a little bit better to me. But the way that I saw it was that there was this big elder uh, elf, mm-hmm. and and uh, she seemed to be proportioned like a human. Mm-hmm. So that's like just what happens to you when you get older as an elf. No, so she Sava of the Sun Folk is a very very ancient elf. She was actually descended from like children or children's children of the the high ones who okay. were the original elves slash aliens who came mm-hmm. here to the world of two moons. Uh-huh. <laughs> but we don't learn this right away. You don't learn this right away. Well, yeah. she does. She does allude to like her family being very old. Sure, and they cross the desert to establish sorrows and so she has the kind of like biology of those or i don't know what we what you'd call it of the the traits of those ancient elves but the subsequent generations of elves have all become shorter just because it's like better suited to this sure. survival survivability in sure. this world so that's why she's tall but you don't get taller as you get older as oh, okay okay all right, interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, good to know. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Uh, and so we talked about Ryak a little bit before. Yep. Um, he and Cutter kind of like get into it because they both uh, are vying for the affections of Lita yep. in different ways. Yep. Like Bridget Jones's diary. Um, it is just like. And Bridget then Jones's at one point, diary. like, like instead of like throwing, like slapping him with a glove, he like throws a was it a, a knife? wand a it wand. Was a wand he throws a <laughs> wand at you and you're like he's like what is this wand and he's just like i've challenged you it's an yeah. ancient elven challenge not seen for thousands of years the trials of head hand and heart i'm surprised they got that wand handy the the dueling wand yeah yeah you gotta have that wand ready man i mean it's been thousands of years it's what probably if, covered in dust what if uh, some guy tries to you know like move in on uh, your significant other. What well, are you gonna do? It hasn't do? happened in thousands of years, so I assume Justin, everything. You don't will keep work your out. Wa- challenge wand on you at all times. I don't. Yeah, what I've got I'm, mine in I'm, my bag. What if someone started like flirting with your wife? I'm secure in my relationship. You gotta throw it on oh, that wand. I don't wand. need a wand. That's nice. Listen, that's <laughs> good for you. But <laughs> when the day comes, you're gonna wish you had that wand. Maybe, maybe I will. Uh, <laughs> I would the not same. do so well in the trials. I don't think. Because there are three trials uh, oh. they have to go through. It's like a it's like a competition, mm-hmm. and I don't know how the points work or anything like that. Because like there's three trials, and at the end, like Ryak is like, "Hey, maybe I can, uh, uh, I'll, I'll win this one, and it'll be fine." And I'm like, "Well, you lost Quidditch. the first two because the first one, <laughs> it's, it's like Quidditch. You know, where the, like the main Quidditch. thing is worth like a million yeah, points. This, yeah, it's like, and not, it's like, well, no, why did I do that other stuff? Yeah, why did I get hit in the face with a big?" <laughs> A big rubber ball. Yeah. Or whatever. Like flying medicine around, ball. like throwing quaffles. Like, why am I even doing this? Why Just get I the fa- snitch. Why did I fall 150 feet to the ground and die? <laughs> <laughs> I got like bone juice. Remember uh, bone juice? You guys want some bone juice? Yeah, bone juice. Oh, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, bone juice. Anyway, bone juice. Uh, we're getting off topic, uh, uh, which is weird for no. us. Which we I know that doesn't sound right. We're always very focused here. There must the be show. bone juice in this book. Yeah. We wouldn't talk about it otherwise. Bone! Uh, Daddy, so the the trials will will go through. Really Sorry, quickly. that's just that phrase has just been stuck in my head for like two weeks, and I can't stop saying it. Bone, daddy. Do you want to do it again? Something? Just get it out. Bone, daddy. 
Okay, great. I think I missed Bone Daddy. No, I don't know where it comes from. Oh, okay. okay. I thought that was an inside joke. No, no. So there's a anyways. trial by combat, right? The two, yeah. uh, uh, Ryak yep. and Cutter, go at it. Cutter wins. Yep. Yeah. And then there's also like a scavenger hunt. Find your find your swords yep. yeah. in this cave. It's, a cra- it's in a crack. It's in a crack, and you have to figure out how to get it. Yep. Um, basically, what happens is... Uh, Cutter does kind of cheat. Cutter kind of <laughs> cheats, but he doesn't like know that he's cheating, and that's how they justify it at the end. Well, he didn't know he was cheating. But what he does, he's like looking down in the crack and trying to reach his 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 sword, and he can't. But his his necklace with the magnet on it is dangling down there, mm-hmm. and so he gets he he's able to grab it that way. And then Ryak, he's like he like builds make, a tool. He makes a contraption. He's yeah. an inventor. He's being very. He has a very creative solution. And he's like, hey, I did it, everyone. And he's like, oh yeah, Cutter's been here for a while. Um, he's like, oh, well, Cutter obviously cheated. He's like, well, he didn't know. Yeah, he, he didn't hit, know magnets were a thing. He didn't. He's too stupid to know. So it's fine. He yeah, wins. he's uh, he's too stupid to know he broke the law, so he gets off scot free. <laughs> That's how the stupid. system works. I mean, he's a brave <laughs> and noble chieftain warrior. Okay. Uh, blood of ten chiefs. Blood of ten chiefs. So exactly. uh, there, there's one more trial left, and then it seems like uh, S- was her name Sava. Sava. Uh, she Sava? like looks looks into both of them and like does a Vulcan mind meld and decides like how will I decide like who is the victor. Here she's like, oh, I know. We'll just go over to this cliff that we always use. No, she. Well, classic yes, cliff. yes. Yeah. She, well, okay. She looks into their minds. She's like, she finds their greatest fear, and then they have to overcome it. Right, right. And it's both the same thing. No, no, it's no, not. No, no, Rags no. Fear no. Is, Rags fear. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> You're being my great ally today, and I really appreciate it. I'm Carolyn's uh, attack dog today. Is for Elf Quest failure? <laughs> okay, which is sure. I would say a pretty common fear. Sure, sure, sure. He lost that trial the second he got up there. Exactly. Because he was a dick about it. And Cutter's just got a very basic fear, which I also share, heights. Yeah. It's so high. Okay, so that what they do is they go to this like cliff area, and there's like a very thin uh, like rock bridge yes. that separates these two areas, and you have to walk across the other side without help from yes. other people. And and that's the whole trial. And then at first Cutter can't do it. Like he's like he's like he gets kind of freaked out. But it is just funny to me that they decided like, well, heights, this is obviously what it should be for for Cutter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but as far as failure, it's like, well, we're already here. We can just do have Rayek do his thing too. No, that's not his trial. His trial oh, I don't Tristan. know what his I don't know what his victory condition was. Yeah, have been. I don't know what his win I just know what his loss be. condition was. Like he had to like show him up and be like, I'll show him. Like I can do it. This idiot can. Right. Uh, and like it was his pride and his, uh, you know, inability again, to again, be. Again, what, what should he? Yeah. What I don't, should he have? I done? mean, if I think maybe if he would have just like, maybe like comforted Cutter or something, like, hey man, don't worry, you tried. I think then he would have been the victor. Guys, there's so much more to this story. I really want <laughs> you all to read the rest of it because there's so it gets so much more complex and nuanced and beautiful and we're gonna read another 40 years worth of stories amazing (laughs) villains you haven't even met like the major villain in the series her name is winna will and she's fucking evil and i've had several terrifying nightmares about her wow and she's hot which is a complicated feeling they're all all good to know they're all kind of hot totally well except uh, tree stump Cutter, Cutter <laughs> eventually wins because, uh, of course, he does. He's the hero. Yes. He wins, and, and uh, Lita makes it makes it clear to him that you didn't win me. You won the right to like go on a date. I'm not Correct. some prize to be won. Not That's even to go Aladdin. on a date. Not even to go on. A, he has the right to attempt to woo her. Uh huh. Okay? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. She will allow that to she happen. She swiped right on Bumble, and yeah. that's what he what's yeah. what she got. She's not going to exactly. start the conversation though. He's got to start the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I mean, that's more or less where the the main story ends. And then, like the last part of the book, that part of the book that we read mm-hmm. was this uh, big flashback. Uh, they're all uh, all the wolf writers are hanging out and telling stories, like, and they decide to tell, like, hey, what about the most horrible story that I ever went through when I lost my mother and father at the same time? Well, they it's do. It's inspiring, though. The it's elves... like when Batman tells his story. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They do a. They, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear that story ever they again. They do a howl. They do a howl where they. It's like a memorial where they remember, mm-hmm. you know, their their someone who's passed away, mm-hmm. and it's also it's a great way to like. I mean, it's a great fucking story. Sure, sure. And it's also a good way to like 
solidify your history and the yeah. tribe and everything. It's just really yeah. tough. Like, oh, I got to tell the story when my parents died. Yeah, come well, on. Like, this is how he became the strong leader right. he is sure. today. And it was yeah. instilling, you know, pride in his people and faith in their leader. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's good. It's been six years since his parents passed away and he became chief. Mm -hmm. So he was like a young chief. This is kind of his first major test as chief. Sure. It's a lot like Jax Teller in Sons of Anarchy. Okay. You know mm -hmm. Jax Teller in Sons of Anarchy? No. He's a young chief as well. I believe sure. you. <laughs> Motorcycle chief. Uh, a bone daddy. He's kind of a bone daddy, yeah. So we get this backstory, and, and from what I've read also, it seems like there are other books that focus on Bear Claw and Joy Leaf. And yeah, I, assu some I assume flashbacks. someone named like Apple Fritter and uh, Old Fashioned. Gonna rip on Bear Claw, huh? And <laughs> like it's his fault. They named a donut after that later. That's a weird name for a donut, anyways. We all know that's weird. That's a great name for a donut. It's a mm, weird I name love it. Donut. I like. I love the the idea of of like oh, I want this donut that that's fucking it's big as a a bear's foot. But I don't, you're not giving me any information on flavor. You're not giving me any information at all. I, see, bear I don't want have shape. apples in them. Mm, sometimes maybe. See, I don't know. It's more of an apple fritter. I haven't had a bear claw in so long. I think they're just big. It'd be like called donuts, like uh, like uh, old roundies or something. I don't like, know. They got uh, the can shape. Can I get a dozen old roundies? But well, see, I want flavors. I want to know my flavors. Strawberry mm -hmm. old roundies. Oh, dude, a strawberry iced donut, the best. Delicious. <laughs> Great. Hmm? Perfect. Now that we're <laughs> what are we done. talking about? Uh, uh, basically, Joy Leaf and Bear Cleef. Uh, Bear, Bear Claw. <laughs> they get killed by Mad Coil. Mad Coil. Yeah. yeah yes. They do. Uh, and then they, they triumph over. He's a monster. They, they, he lives in the, the woods in, that's a, in the, a holt of his own. That's the point of the story. <laughs> they suffer great loss, and then they come together to uh, defeat the, the evil, as yes. it were. Yeah, and and that's more or less where it wraps up. We also see uh, Lita like has been like in the background, just kind of listening to this, mm -hmm. and she, then she's like very into it. She's, she's just like really. She's like, this up. is such a deep story, and then and then uh, Tree Beard is the it looks down and Tree said, Stump. <laughs> Tristan, I am gonna stop you because I don't appreciate your tone right now. What do you mean? Tree I beard. feel like I, you I said Treebeard was the one that I would cosplay as. Walking a fine line, mm -hmm. and I, I don't like where it's going. Okay, look, look. Okay, I, let's be respectful. These are elves. <laughs> they have names. These are like elves. Tree stump, you know, and Skywise. Yeah, and uh, those are the ones I remember. Yeah. Joy Leaf, Red Lance. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. Um, Grease beard. Grease beard. Yes. Uh. So <laughs> that that more or less wraps up where we are. And then like, but like, obviously, we haven't even started the elf quest itself at this point. That's right. And uh, <laughs> isn't the real elf quest life? Yeah. And the real elf quest it? was friendship. No. No. Oh, I mean, we're humans. The mm -hmm. We're the evil people who shut down. were killed the Lisa Frank Castle people. So, yeah. But like, you know, in they were, later, kind of asking for it. So elves. And humans become closer okay. together. Mm -hmm. And then, in fact, there's a lovely tale where one of the elves adopts a human. They find like a, a baby that's been abandoned in the woods. Oh, yeah. The elves used to steal babies and put them in trees. Oh, you know. <laughs> Bear Claw used to do that. So I was like, oh, well, you know. <laughs> you know, maybe Bear Claw died was the worst thing. They, th they made sure the babies were okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they were, were dangling fine. by their diaper. That part That's was not, not a good way to dangle a baby. That part was, was a, not cool. I have a baby. If you dangle that baby by the diaper, it is not going to go. Wh well who, what's baby. what's worse, me me calling Bear Claw a donut or Bear Claw hanging a baby out in the woods? <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know which. You know, who who who's to blame? Cultural times were different. Yeah, so. things were very different in 1978 <laughs> slash uh, the year uh, Jimmy Carter the was year president. 35. Yeah, it was very different on the world of two moons. Uh, so uh, before we go, uh, I do want to go over our panel picks uh, for this week. Uh, each week we like to kind of uh, go over like our most memorable moments, our, our favorite uh, moments or sequences. Mine uh, was this moment where they're meeting Sava. It's like this cool splash page where they, they meet this leader and like you don't know a lot about her at first, but like she's like like kind of like drenched in light, mm -hmm. like multicolored light. Mm -hmm. And she's like, look, she looks very different. And like, this was another one of those moments where I was like, wow, there's like there's so much like weird, like lore and stuff. There's always stuff I want to find out more about. They, they're very good at introducing uh, new concepts and characters and then like exploring those and making that feel compelling throughout. 
So that was uh, one of the better moments for me. Uh, Andrew, what was your panel pick? Uh, mine was from during the trial challenge stuff between mm -hmm. uh, Cutter and Rayek. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just kind of a nice big page with like a big circle in the middle that had a nice big image of Cutter. And Cutter's very weird body that I could not stop staring at. <laughs> and it, it, it awoken something in me, I think. Yes. And, uh, it was very powerful. And yes. I, you know, I think that everyone should enjoy that. Yeah. Um, and now I'm going to get you one of those big body pillows with like. Don't do that. My wife wouldn't like that. A person on it. Don't don't get it me a cutter, cutter a cutter body pillow. You don't please. think so? Well. No. It's coming. It's There's a lot of ordered. conversations I need to have with my wife to explain that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Go, uh, it's not worth it. <laughs> so, uh, Carolyn, what was your panel pick? My panel pick was uh, the, at the festival where they're hanging out. The two elf tribes have come together. There's like some little understanding happening. And like three of the women, Lita and her, uh, I think, sister, Shen Shen, and then one of their buddies uh, who eventually gets a name, uh, are dancing. And I just love the way that the Wendy Penny drew the fabric for this. Mm -hmm. Like I just loved as especially as a little kid, I was just like, so pretty. And just like the fabric. Yeah. Cool. No, it's like yeah. it's a really nice like full splash page. The, yeah. the, a lot of these uh these comics use uh, like all of the page like it's usually split into like at least four to six panels. Mm -hmm. and, like splash pages like really mean something. And even when there's even my panel pick was just like three quarters of a page, but that one's a full a full-on scene, which mm -hmm. is really nice, mm -hmm. uh, a, a really great moment. Mm -hmm. Do you um, guys notice the cool how they when it was like you might get confused reading this panel what order it goes the in, arrows? and they just put arrows. That was nice. Brilliant. That was very nice. I was like, oh, thank you. Sometimes thank you. the simplest. I was gonna read it this way, and they they helped me. Sometimes the simplest solution is the best. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna break your computer. God damn it! You were reading I, that stupid X Men book. I'm gonna throw I your computer in the like toilet nothing, like, and prevent you from doing any more work this week. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, don't do that. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Carolyn, I know that you would recommend this book to uh, everyone yes. who's ever lived. Yes. Um, Andrew, what about you? You it sounds like you came away positive. Listen, you okay? You got to be ready. You got to be. An irony poisoned uh, person who's just who needs a break from that, mm -hmm. who needs something sincere and good, and something where the the authors believe in the story they're telling mm -hmm. and want you to be on this journey with them. And you got to give it a little time. You got to be willing. You got to be willing to put in that effort. You got to be willing to suspend your disbelief and break from your normal habits of reading, and then you will uh, find true happiness and joy finally at, at last in your life. That's like the most ringing endorsement we've ever had on this show, I, and I yeah. am honored. I was always like, oh, no, there's no Spider-Man. What am I going to do? And then I was like, this is great. <laughs> and Tristan doesn't have anything to, else to say about no, whether or not to Tristan, raise. Tristan, <laughs> whoa, 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 give whoa. us your thoughts. I, I enjoyed this book. I had a good time. I think that if I came to this as a as a youth that I would have devoured every inch of it. Like mm -hmm. It yeah. seems like it's like yeah. it, it, uh, it reads so well, like... Like when I was a kid, I got like had phases when I would get like very into something and then mm -hmm. exhaust it. But there's so much of this out there already, so easily accessible that if you know, if I was 11 and I found this, then I would just like be an elf head Hell myself. Yeah. Hell yeah! Give uh, this to your kids. Don't try to get them into like Marvel comics where yeah. they think, oh, I have to explain Secret Invasion first before you can read this book. Yeah, like, yeah. Ugh, right. No. Well, dark the, rain happens. Yeah. It's like, uh. I wouldn't. I, I would recommend like checking this out if you're interested in the kind of like branching out from something uh, that is like not not Marvel or DC, but like, has its own like its its own thing going on. Like, like again, like it's all tons and tons of it is free online. And then uh, I would also recommend like if you have uh, if you have a, a nephew, if you have kids, if you have uh, if you just know a child, I guess. That is of age. <laughs> you just are friends with a child for if some can, reason. If they can, if th if they're okay, <laughs> not related to reading, you, reading uh, something that's like PG thirteen ish. Does it get any? Um, they're in the later episode, the later chapters, mm -hmm. like the collected compendium, like book eight. Mm -hmm. There's like a pretty awesome pre big battle orgy scene. Wow, that I highly what? recommend checking out. Not that's with a that. whole other elf tribe that they meet. They're going to war against the trolls. Is it? They're it's armored sex up, havers. and they are ready to bone daddy. Wow. 
fascinating. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's the final word I would have to say, yep. Bone Daddy. Uh, join us uh, next week. We're going to read, uh, s- next time, uh, we're going to read Secret Six by Gail Simone. Um, we hope you all will join us uh, and read along. Uh, I think we're going to read the whole first volume, which is two miniseries. I'm sorry in advance. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but until then, we will see you all in the funny papers. Hey, everyone, if you like this, be sure to check out Dropout.tv. It's by far the best way to support Dorkly. You can get this show a week early, as well as other Dorkly shows like Table Pop and Today in Nerd History. Whoa, you also get a bunch of Dropout exclusives like Dimension 20, Troopers, Paranoia. There's so many great shows, and you can get a free week trial by going to Dropout.tv. Ahora! That means now. It does. I'll have to check on that.